everyone, it's me, it's Nina, and I'm back with another movie review. I know I'm late, you guys, but I'm here to review Judas and the Black Messiah. Judas and the Black Messiah is directed by Shaka King, starring Lakeith Stansfield, Daniel Kaluuya, Dominique Fishback, and Jesse Plemons. This movie clocks in at two hours and six minutes, is classified as a biography, drama, and history. And the synopsis reads, it's Fred Hampton, a young charismatic activist, becomes the chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party, putting him directly in the crosshairs of the government, the FBI, and the Chicago police. But to destroy the revolution, the authorities are going to need a man on the inside. And that is all I'm going to say because this is a non-spoiler review. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I watch mo movies so you don't have to. <clears throat> I watch them so I can tell you whether you should know or go um, watch this movie in theaters or as this movie is streaming on the HBO Max platform. Let's get on into the review, shall we? The performances. The performances were fantastic. They were so, so, so compelling and they were so good. Um, since most people are already given Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield their flowers, let me first of all give a round of applause to my girl, our Black Queen, Dominique Fishback. She did the daggone thing. You may remember her from Project Power with Jamie Foxx. She also played in The Hate You Give. Um, and that was about two or three years ago. And that was an excellent black film as well. Her performance stood out to me. It was so nuanced. It was so compelling and powerful in the feminine way that we can do it you know so it was just really really good i really really bought everything that she brought to the movie as a whole and also too she plays in her in the other movie project power she must be an, uh, she's an artist because she's an actor but i think she has some other kind of musical background poetic lyricist like whatever she does like she shines when you know she's reciting poetry or when she's rapping or um poetic spoken word just phenomenal um daniel kaluuya did a great job the only thing that bothered me was his voice um the way he spoke the vernacular or the cadence whatever i know he was trying to interpret um Fred Hampton also he has a British accent so he had a double whammy to try to you have to watch it with subtitles because it was hard to make out what he was saying sometimes and I'll just say that but otherwise the performance was very very powerful very impactful and another thing is that I would like for black american actors to play our historical iconic black leaders and we have a plethora of black americans who have who could have played that role and i was like well do they have like some kind of affirmative action in the u.s hollywood circuit where you know you have to have a certain amount of british black americans playing roles because we had him playing Fred Hampton. We have Cynthia Erivo playing Harriet Tubman. Like, what are we doing? Like, no, I'm not here for it. But I mean, I know we're under the same African diaspora, but I still think that Black Americans should play the Black American struggle that is unique to the United States of America. Three Ks don't get it messed up. Lakeith Stansfield, he was great he was so his performance was very nuanced he is one of those up-and-coming 
actors that you're going to keep your eye on. He is going to have a lot of opportunities open up, opening up for him. He played it very, very, um, he was so believable and very effective with, um, you know, because he's like, first off, he's like this little shysty, um, a shysty con man. He's going around with a fake F FBI badge and swindling people and stuff like that. So you know he was already slimy. So on top of that, uh, I don't want to get into spoilers, but in the course of the movie, you will see him try to be play a good guy. Then you will see him fall back into his shysty parts. And then he'll be a, the strong Black Panther person, and then he'll go to like something more sinister. And he did that very effectively without any problems at all. And I appreciated that. And what and another thing I appreciated about the performance and the way the script was written, they the filmmakers did not make him an empathetic um villain. He was the villain and he was the villain. You know what I'm saying? He was the, along with the government. So they didn't make him empathetic. They didn't humanize him and make him, you know, yeah, he did some things and all that stuff, but yeah. So I, I liked that they kept him compartmentalized and we was like, okay, Judas, this is Judas all the way. And we didn't, we didn't vary from that. So as far as the story goes, I think people's expectations might be misconstrued. This movie is called Judas and the Black Messiah. This movie is about Bill O'Neill and him infiltrating, infiltrating the Black Panther um, chapter in Chicago. Now, while this is true, two things can be true at the same time they did shine a excellent spotlight on the Black Panther party. They really broke it down and show what their contributions were to the Black community, what they stood for, what they was fighting for. And it was a Blackly Black film. It, it was so Spike Lee-esque. Um, unapologetic. I, I like the way they kind of lead into instead of like glossing over and maybe have a line of dialogue. No, they they showed in repeated scenes what the the mission was, what the agenda was, what. And I, I love how they told the story and they didn't like they showed the story. They didn't tell the story, and I appreciated that and all that it gave and and and. All of that. So hopefully the movie is supported and celebrated enough that we can dive more into Fred Hampton. That young man was 21 years old when he was snuffed out. And that means his parents were very influential in his life. Like, how does someone who is 21 become so powerful, so well-spoken, so well-educated, and all of that. Like, I want to know who Fred Hampton was. I want to know his parents. I want to know his upbringing. We need to see that on TV because we need these parents to have some kind of model where we're not celebrity worshiping and we're not worrying about the wrong things. We have to get laser focused on what is going on in America and understand we are at war and we need to stop fooling with all this foolishness and really understand what the what the stakes are in the United States right now. So anyway, let me get off my soapbox. Okay, so anyway, the action, the cinematography was very well shot. The soundtrack, the score was so haunting it would every time it would get so dramatic the the violin the strings would go zoom like it was just it would just draw you in like you knew something was going to happen like clutching your pearls but i thought the the score was super effective with um leading us down the path that we're going on and i thought it was an excellent film um yeah so as for me and my rating 
I give Judas and the Black Messiah four and a half out of five stars. I also say go see it in the theaters or make sure you stream it on HBO Max, but it is a must see. And as always, this is Anita with No Go Reviews and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and let the diva know when you stop by. Have you seen Black Messiah? I know you have. If you had any interest in it, you've seen it. Get down in the comments and tell me how you thought that they portrayed um, Fred Hampton. Do you think they did a worthy job? Um, Bill O'Neill. Oh my God. Doesn't um, Lakeith Stanfield look just like him? He looked just like him. Um, the movie was so effective. I mean, it just really gut punched me. It was it was an awesome movie and um, one that everyone should see. And so anyway, until the next review.